So good to have you join us again. If you're joining us for the first time here at Kalgoorlie Baptist Church, my name is Elliot. I'm the senior pastor. We're just kicking off a new series on the first letter of John in the New Testament. And I'm going to read chapter one of that letter to you first up. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testify to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. Well, unlike his fellow disciples of Jesus, the Apostle John had lived a long life, even by today's standards. It was during his final years on earth that John wrote his magnificent contributions to the New Testament. Today we begin taking a closer look at this first letter of John, written to the early followers of Jesus that he was pastoring. Here in chapter 1, which I've just read to you, John declares three truth claims that win out over three false claims. John proclaims the truth claims over every false claim. So verse 1, John wrote, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. So there's the first truth claim right there. Jesus was present at the dawn of creation in equal partnership with the Father and Holy Spirit. Contrary to popular belief, Jesus was never late on the scene. He's the producer director and star of the most important scenes in all of history. Nearly 2,000 years ago, the Apostle John knew that he needed to proclaim this truth to combat the lies of the Gnostics, spelt Gnostics, who did not believe that Jesus was divine. They denied the Trinity, which is an essential biblical truth. The Greek word that John used in this section was logos. It's a word embodying an idea, a statement, a speech, a divine utterance, an analogy used of Christ, expressing the thoughts of the Father through the Spirit, reasoning expressed by words. And the other Greek word in that section was apigallo, meaning to make known openly, declare universally. So John's declaring, proclaiming that Jesus is the Word, the Logos. So now, nearly 2,000 years later, there are still some funny ideas about Jesus around, aren't there? We need to know the truth and stand on the truth to combat these funny ideas about Jesus. Let's proclaim the truth claims over every false claim. John continued in verse 2. The life appeared, we have seen it and testify to it, and we proclaim, there it is again, to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. So the second truth claim from John is that John himself was an eyewitness of Christ. The closest friend, in fact, that Jesus had during his earthly life. You will not find a more credible witness to the way, the truth and life of Jesus than this man, the Apostle John. How much can we trust John? This much. When Jesus was about to breathe his last on the cross... One of his final concerns was to ensure that Mary, his mother, would be cared for. And who did Jesus trust enough to choose for this honour? John, the writer of this letter. That's how much you and I can trust John. 
Let's proclaim the truth claims over every false claim. Verse 3, John continues, We proclaim again to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. So the third truth claim here from John is that he wants others to connect with Jesus in the same way he did. It's an understatement to say that John was privileged to be the one person in history to be known as the best friend of Jesus, the disciple who Jesus loved. But what really impresses me is John's generous spirit. He wants everyone to know Jesus as their best friend. He wants everyone to have that opportunity. John continues, verse 5, This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim, and there's a false claim coming up, if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. So the first false claim, as you just heard, is when the claim is made to have fellowship with Christ, but you're walking in darkness. Charles Spurgeon makes a, a really helpful point on this. He says, Mark here. In other words, pay attention. Mark here. This does not mean walking in the darkness of sorrow, for there are many of God's people that walk in the darkness of doubts and fears, and yet they have fellowship with God. Nay, they sometimes have fellowship with Christ all the better for the darkness of the path along which they walk. But the darkness here means is the darkness of sin the darkness of untruthfulness. If I walk in a lie or walk in sin and then profess to have fellowship with God, I have lied and do not have the truth. He who walks in ignorance and sin is in fellowship with the powers of darkness, but he is certainly not in fellowship with God who is light. Charles Spurgeon uh, had great empathy for those who struggle with depression um, who had that black dog or that black cloud uh, around them. Uh, he understood because he suffered from that himself. And so we know that when Spurgeon uh, encourages us to, to be considerate of those who are followers of Jesus, who, who love him, who walk with that passion to be righteous and yet struggle with doubts and fears and darkness. Let, let's get alongside them and let's let's journey with them and and let's encourage them on that walk. Let's proclaim the truth claims over every false claim. John writes in verse 8, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If, however, we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So there's a second false claim there that John warns us about. Anyone who says they are without sin. Uh, Ryan Marx is a contemporary scholar and he says this, John's main argument here is that those who are truly Christians recognize that they are sinners and are saved by Jesus Christ. They are blood-bought and sustained by Jesus. Those who claim they have not sinned make God out to be a liar and they are not saved. In verse 10, John concludes this chapter. And he writes, If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. So there's the third false claim. The claim that anyone who says they have never sinned Anyone who says that needs a re reality check, right? Here's the best reality check that you can refer them to. The Apostle Paul backs up the Apostle John's teaching about the reality of sin in every human heart when he explains his personal struggle with such magnificent honesty in his letter to the Romans in chapter 7, reading from verse 14. The Apostle Paul writes this, We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. 
I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is my in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I do want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's proclaim the truth claims over every false claim. The Apostle John knew Jesus literally as his best friend. The Apostle John wrote this letter because he wanted to provide every reader with the opportunity to know Jesus as their best friend too. And I want to give you that opportunity now as I pray a prayer of salvation. I invite you to pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that your son Jesus planted in tears the seeds of my eternal future when he went to the cross of Golgotha for me. I believe that he bled and died for me, that he rose again for me and that he is able to forgive me for all my sins so that I won't have to pay the penalty of eternal death. I repent of all my sins and choose to live for you for the rest of my life. Thank you, my Saviour and Lord Jesus, that you never gave up on your mission to destroy death and sin because you consider that I am worth it. You gave everything so that I could have the opportunity today to be part of the most incredible harvest in history. Please help me to live my life as a daily thank you note for the priceless gift that I have received from you today. In your wonderful and holy name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer with me, then you've prayed the most important prayer of your life. We'd love to hear about it. Please get in touch. After this video has ended, you'll see ways that you can contact us here at Kalgoorlie Baptist Church and we can encourage you on your journey that you have begun, the most important journey of your life. It is the best journey to be on, the journey to eternity.